Hey, what's up? I can't sleep, so I'm going to uh, tell you a story about uh, the FARC and the M19 in uh, Colombia when we were scrapping with... Uh... Well, look, look. I, first off, I have to tell you, I was assigned to the... Um, the only reason I became an EOD person was that it paid additional money. <laughs> That's why I jumped out of planes. That's why I tried out for all the different, just to try to make some more money. Uh, and at the time, I believe uh, being in the EOD community uh, gave you like $50 more. So about 84, I was down in Panama, 1984, not 1884. And I was assigned to the 36 EOD at Corzol in Panama. Um, anyways, uh, I get uh, assigned to a guy by the name of Bob Ballard, and we called him Big Bob Ballard. He was a like 6'6", six, six, at least 250 pounds, big, huge guy. A big huge white guy. He used to call us all a bunch, he used to call us a bunch of little fucking dickheads. And if you keep fucking around, I'm going to scuff you up. And he, he had this, he had like a thumb-sized dimple in his, in his chin. But he was, and he was extremely strong. And uh, he had, uh, uh, we call it WP, it's called white phosphorus. It, it's a very, very, very hazardous chemical. And from Vietnam, he had this white phosphorus burn down his uh, face so anyways <clears throat> um, I ended up going with him down to the uh, the Darien province is the uh, part of a uh, Panama that borders uh, Colombia so Panama we would head south and the border to Colombia would be south of Panama City in that and uh, <clears throat> we would travel what we call clandestine. We would travel by uh, usually civilian vehicles, not military vehicles, and what we would use are called uh, sanitized fatigues, boots. Uh, you don't carry your ID tags, which is your, we call them dog tags, they're these ID tags. Uh, you're, you're uh, all the Things with the exception of the weapons, uh, clothing, underwear, um, they would give us uh, pieces of gold and cash in case we got, uh, in case things went a little sideways. So anyways, <clears throat> we go down there and we meet up with the people that uh, need our help and uh, uh, Sergeant Ballard spoke better Spanish than I did at the time and uh, they decided that uh, oh, we would teach them how to set booby traps. We would teach them how to employ what's called a claymore mine. I would teach them how to use ammo nitrate, fuel oil. I would teach them how to make basically improvised explosive devices, IEDs, um, potassium chlorate and sugar, hydrochloric acid. There's all these kinds of things. Um, Anyways, so, well, it, 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 we were actually in the uh, country of Colombia, and no, the Colombian government didn't invite us down there. We didn't go through a, uh, a visa office. <laughs> Anyways, and this is my very first firefight. This is my first firefight in the uh, military. So, I don't know if you know much about an M16 or an AR-15, but on the, uh, as you hold the pistol grip, you hold it like the pistol grip is here, and there's a safety selector on the uh, left side of the rifle. And on a military rifle, when I was in at that point in time, it had um, safe, which was like this, then semi-automatic, and then automatic. Now they changed it later from safe to 
semi-automatic, and then do what they call burst, three-round burst, where we go, boop, 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 boop. but anyway, so uh, we get there, and we're all set up in an ambush, and I've never been, now I've, I've, I've shot at people, but I'm not going to fucking tell myself, I know how to use, I knew how to use weapons growing up in Detroit before I joined the military, and it's probably one of the reasons I ended up in the military, but that's a long fucking story. So, anyways, so we're laying down, and how you set up an ambush. Uh, we didn't have uh, too many heavy heavy weapons, but we had one guy that was a good shot, and it's called an L. If you think of the letter L like this, well, let me turn it over like this, and then you flatten it out. So we would be set up dispersed along the L like this and then the guy who had uh, best shooting capacity would be head on into the uh, people that were walking from this point here the people that were walking god damn it were walking into the ambush would walk into the heavy weapon and then the rest of us would just do like that, shoot them. Um, and, and I'm not bragging about killing people, but um, I did what I had to do. Um, this was my last chance or I was going back. Yeah, I'm not going to fucking make any excuses. So, and But I don't want you to think that, uh, well, I, I'll just, let's just move on. So, it's about... Um, eight o'clock at night. And I don't know if you've ever been in the jungle, but it's like this. But at the time, we had the very first or second generation uh, night vision goggles. And uh, they were what's called a monocular. So you would have two eyes and it would come down to one scope. It wasn't like four scopes. Like, anyways, it was, your depth of perception was all fucked up, but you could see people. And I mean, it was it was extremely effective and uh, the M19 or the FARC they would call us the uh, green men because we would you could be I could be with the night vision goggles I could walk up to somebody and be maybe three feet away from them and they couldn't even fucking see me because of the uh, triple canopy jungle and so anyway so let me get on with the fucking thing so uh, the ambush is getting ready to happen and um, how it kicks off is the guy at this portion of the L, he starts shooting first, and then we all just start shooting into him. And uh, so I'm sitting there, hunched up over my rifle, ready to go. And I had locked and loaded around, but I pulled the slide handle back, let it come forward. You, have, you tap the forward assist, and you settle in on the rifle like this. And usually, at that point in time, we would have every uh, third round would be a tracer. Sometimes it's five, but in, in jungle combat, oh, let me blow my nose, it had to be three because you didn't want to waste four bullets. And you would track their muzzle flashes. And I'll tell you this, that uh, I learned from that. Um, I had never known that through Cuba, the uh, Russians were supplying arms and ammunition, AK-47s, and the bullets that they fired out of there, we use a, a red phosphorus, which leaves a tracer around. If you ever see it, the ass end of the bullet has a piece of red phosphorus in it, and when it goes down range, it lights up so you can track if you're on target or not. What I never saw before in my life was a green tracer, and when you're in training, nobody shoots back at you. <laughs> So, and I'm, I'm, um, I'm fucking wound up tight. I think I'm maybe, I'm maybe 18, 18 years old. And, um, uh, uh, Sergeant Ballard's sitting right over here on my shoulder. We're kind of touching, touching shoulders. And, uh, I start shooting and I have my weapon up like this and I squeeze the fucking trigger and nothing happens. And I panic 
So I, I reach up and what's oh, called the charging handle. I pull the charging handle back, let it come forward around ejects, and it puts another round into the chamber, and which it, it uh, feeds it into the chamber so it's ready to fire. And I fucking squeeze it again, and I'm like, what the fuck? And I jack another round out, and I do the same thing again. And then there's an acronym, which is called SPORTS. It's where you slap up on the magazine to make sure it's properly seated. You pull back on the charging handle. When you pull back on the charging handle, you turn the weapon a little bit at this, and you look down in the chamber chamber to me to make sure you don't have a stove pipe around, or you don't have a round stock, or you didn't double feed. You just make sure the chamber's clear, and then it's um, then you release, tap the forward assist, uh, tap the forward assist, and you squeeze the trigger again. So this is probably the fourth round that I've wasted. And all of a sudden, I get fucking hit in the side of the fucking head. And I have a boom. And uh, so Valley goes, hey, you fucking Jerry, take your weapon off a of safe. I had never, see, this is the, the, the safety selector was like this in the safe position. I had never bothered to move it from safe to semi-automatic. And that's my, uh, never fired around. I got... Uh, I never saw so many green tracers in my life. We ended up winning that, and, and that's why I'm fucking here, because we ambushed and we set them up, and it was, yeah, it was uh, 15 of us on uh, seven of them, so we over absolutely overwhelmed them. And, uh, but, yeah, that was my first <laughs> experience. It, uh, not, it's not, it wasn't, it was never a declared combat zone, but to me, that's fucking combat, so it is what it fucking is, uh, so that's my story. Um, wow. Uh, my first combat action. Um, and another thing I'll tell you is a lot of times, no one, you won't find a lot of people who admit this, but um, when you're in combat, especially if you get shelled or mortared, a lot of us piss our pants a little bit and some guys shit on themselves. Um, it happens a little bit more than people want to admit. And we would call, if, if you noticed that somebody had pissed on themselves, we'd call it a winky dot. And you, you didn't really say anything because, anyways, I pissed on myself uh, a few times when I was in combat. So I, I'm not, that's not to brag, but it's just something that people don't ever really talk about uh, when you deal with uh, actual life and death, serious life and death situations. Uh, and it's... It's not really, I'd have to say probably the opening scene in Sa Saving Private Ryan is pretty close to, yeah, I'd say that's about as close. Yeah, it, it's, yeah, and there's a couple of things. I can't remember what it was where they were in Vietnam. I can't remember the name of the movie. Nah, anyways, doesn't matter. Nah, I almost had it, fuck. Anyways. William Defoe was the good guy, and the protagonist was some other guy. Nah, it doesn't fucking matter. But that was uh, what it's like to fight in the jungle. Anyways, uh, that's my first experience as a as a combat guy. And I would love to, you know what? I would love to tell you that I was just I stood up and I put a bayonet in my teeth and I went in there and ah, <laughs> fuck no, I never fired around. <laughs> I got punched in the fucking side of the head, and for like uh. Six months, uh, all Sword and Ballard would do is he would call me, you fucking cherry. You're a fucking cherry. Don't fucking talk to me. Nah, anyways. Oh, one of the other things they do to you, you have identification tags if you wear them. And what they do is they make you take them off and either tape them. And there's a belt loop where your belt goes around your waist. And you push those. Uh, you make a loop. So that the, a chain forms, a, a, it connects to your belt loop, and you stick them in your pocket so they don't make any noise. Well, that's a whole different fucking set of stories, but no, nah, that was it. I, I, I promise you, I was never, I tried out to be a, a tier one soldier, but I just wasn't good enough. So it is what it is, and that's my first experience with uh, combat. Stay safe and healthy.
take care of each other if you can. If you can't, hey, take care of yourself. Like a fart in G-string from West Texas on Paso. I'm out of here. I hope you can hear it. Bye-bye.